Hi, this is Michael Thomas, and we're at High Tides Compassionate Care Cannabis Dispensary in Wallala, California, Northern California, in the Emerald Triangle. I started uh, in this path when I was, I'm 68 years old, when I was 14-ish, 14, 15, and I lived in Venice, California, and so my claim to fame is it took me 50 years to get from the alleys of Venice selling cannabis to my friends, you know, in the days of the hippies, amazing time to be there. Uh, to a shop here in Mendocino County, 50 years ago. When I first moved here, I uh, went with my, I moved here, my uncle lived here. So I moved here and then my, I moved my grandmother here many years ago, uh, 1974. And uh, went and looked at somebody's garden that they'd grown commercially and uh, they'd already gone through it, but there are all these little buds. They said, I don't care. So I picked all these buds. I've never seen it grow really. We might have made an attempt to grow. And from that point on, I began to develop my uh, understanding of the cannabis plant. And I grew it for many years out in the bush. And so that was it. And then uh, I owned a roadhouse, Bones Roadhouse in Wallala for many years and uh, needed to get into something else. And my friend and I opened the shop in 2015. It was clear that this county, this is one of the three in the Emerald Triangle, Mendocino, Humboldt, and Trinity counties. You know, this has always been a huge income in this county, and a lot of people I knew, and I was part of it, you know, growing and selling cannabis to different markets everywhere. Um, so I thought it would be a little bit easier in this county, but there was a little stumbling. So the uh, a supervisor here, uh, uh, Dan, was an old friend of mine, and. Uh, you know, he encouraged me, said there shouldn't be any problems. Well, all we had to apply for was a business license. Okay, that's all. That's all it took. And they were tolerant under 215 medical. Uh, but they drug their feet in that business license portion. And it was important to have our license in 2015. That was supposed to be a, uh, a target year for making it easier when the state became legal. Right, so it was important to get it in 2015. Um, and up to the last minute almost, they just put it on a shelf. No one called me or anything. So that was a stumbling block. And Dan Hamburg got on the uh, licensing department, we'll call them, and finally got our license to us like December, December 23rd or something, 2015, because that was a magic year somewhere. In 2000. 17, I believe, the state asked every county if they were going to participate in this Prop 64, which took place in, uh, uh, took effect in January of 2018. And you didn't have much time to make up your mind. That's why some counties still don't have cannabis. Mendocino got on board, but it was all premature rushing this stuff through and the ordinances through. You know, they had uh, their consultants in all these counties too. Mendocino County I'm discussing here. Uh, the consultants made a pretty difficult pathway to licensing. Um, I think copying other ordinances and stuff. So, and they're still struggling with it, really struggling with it for growers here and manufacturers. Dispensaries, a little easy, though not easy. Uh, so those first years we were licensed by the county, then we need to become licensed by the state and officially by the county. So we had to kind of start all over with uh, approvals here where the building was for the county for the state to even look at it and then the state had a long process things were supposed to be streamlined but i didn't really see any streamlining or grandfathering of anything we kind of got by on temporary licenses for many years uh, two years i guess a year and a half uh, until the state had their uh, process together you know uh, they kept just granting us another six months another six months so just the other day, I got my official uh, renewal, you know, for another year and not many hoops. So we thought there was going to be more hoops to jump through. They made it pretty easy on renewal. So the Emerald Triangle is an old trilogy out of the 60s when people were making their way back to the land, you know, got as far as San Francisco, some of them and they started coming up the coast and landing and even up further up, you know, up into Oregon and Washington and started growing cannabis kind of as a, a hippie culture, you know, it was, you know, and as a way of aiding your economy, you know, and then people got into it heavier. So those counties that always stuck in are referred to as the Emerald Triangle, 
Mendocino, Humboldt, Trinity counties, mainly it started on the coastal ranges. So the word OG, for people have claimed it to mean many, many things in the cannabis and other, uh, you know, uh, genres, but it's ocean grown. Okay, so the OG was ocean grown on the ocean coastal ranges from here to the top of Trinity County, Emerald Triangle. And we are the first dispensary and the last as you enter on the coast. All my first years, we just grew a beautiful affy, big fat colas, you know, the size of your wrist, you know, just beautiful things, you know, that people don't really look for that now, you know, because of the price of it. Well, the price is actually lower than it was then. It was much easier for them to pull in your driveway and purchase the pounds and take them away. When we first opened, it was under Medical 215. So we were under Governor Brown's 215 cannabis law. We had to have everyone join our collective. So you had, we signed you up you know, at the front desk there and you joined our collective and you had to get a doctor's permission, which was pretty easy. And so everything was medical, even what is recreation now. But we started with medical and it's still a huge portion of our, uh, our trade here. So it is extracted, there are several kinds of products, but CBD is extracted from THC, cannabidinol, and there are other things, CBNs and other things extracted that are medicines from tinctures to capsules to, uh, we have patches now and we have lots of uh, transdermal creams, uh, three different companies we stock here. And personally, they're amazing. I mean, you know, my joints and stuff, you know, I use them every day. And we talk about CBD tinctures and gel caps and even the creams, it's all a regimen. You know, you gotta do it every day. And even our pets do it every day. We have a pet CBD that's THC, uh, has THC in it for pets. Uh, and it makes a huge difference when, like a lot of Western medicines, when you realize uh, they're working is when you run out of them. So that's when people in the early, you know, ran out of, ran out of the tinctures of really understanding how well it worked. And there are varying um, uh, ratios, CBD versus THC. THC is going to give you some euphoria. But at an 18 to 1, there's, you're not going to feel it. As you get closer to a 1 to 1, that's greater pain killing, you know, for uh, diseases, for cancer, for severe pain, musculoskeletal pain. So that was our medical line, but we still had cannabis and everything else because it was all considered medical. You had your medical ID. When I grew up, right, the stuff we were smoking, we were buying kilos out of Mexico. I know it now to be all sativa, right? Which is the indica and sativa, the two genres really, and hybrids in between there of cannabis. One is uplifting, right? More energy, indica we call into couch. So that sativa is what we got because people got paranoid. I don't know if I did so much. We like didn't want to go anywhere. So we're smoking all the sativa grown in Mexico because the indica isn't going to grow well on huge plantations and big grower areas when that's the way it was then. You know, indica takes more uh, care. So then, yeah, you know, it, you know, we got high, but nothing like now. I never experienced this unless we smoked. I started out smoking hash. My friend's brother was bringing it home from Vietnam, but you know, so I started with the potency. I realized this when we got up here, you know, when I got here in uh, 74 and started smoking this homegrown, you know, Sensimea, seedless, right? We knew of Sensimea, but when I got here, I really got into the culture. Yeah, some people at first, you know, think it's a bit stronger. This stuff is really uh, a little much, but people come for the highest percentages cannabis here you know, which are, we're in the 30s with some of them, you know, and that's just a flower, not a, a concentrate or an extract. And uh, people that are coming back to cannabis are big smiles. Like in a candy store, I love talking to them, you know. Yeah, it's very cool. But I still have the little knee jerk if a cop pulls in behind me, you know, because that's where we live. They were after us, you know. We had long hair and that's just the way it was. Who are these, who are these people, you know, so. Uh, it's much more relaxed now, but you know. But we still, it's not with the feds. You know, the feds still could give us a problem and, uh, Taxes are a huge problem, income taxes and feds, because it's classified as still a Schedule One narcotic. First, I'm gonna go back to CBD for a second, okay? It, it comes with getting older too, perhaps, but CBD is really a, it's a calming factor, right? And I've been on CBD for many years. I keep grounded anyway pretty easily, but I stay, 
more relaxed, I know, with a with CBD regimen, and people will tell you that. It just, you don't know it until you maybe stop using CBD, so I'm a pretty calm and grounded guy anyway. Um, I was worried, of course, about my license renewal. What are they going to do to me? They're going to come here because, you know, they want this or they want that. But this is so uh, kind of scrambled still, and it's all it's all new. It's only a couple years old. You know, they're not coming by and, you know, saying, you know, does that lock work? Everything is in conformity here. But uh, probably concerning uh, getting the license done, you know, uh, renewed, because that is the power. We're not in business if they don't renew our license, you know. And this building's very secure. It's got alarms, it's got video, everything's locked in a safe. I don't really worry about that kind of stuff at night. I just don't. I'm actually thinking about uh, what vendors I have to talk to the next day to get my orders in because with this uh, COVID, uh, consumption's increased. We used to have some serious parties right there in the backyard. We'd have Tent set up with vendors, maybe eight to 12 vendors, freely giving samples. I mean, you needed to watch yourself. It's not, it wasn't up to them, you know, to, to how much you drank or sampled of this. And we had music and I provided, we part bar to barbecue. So we had beautiful parties in the backyard and uh, so much different than, you know, the outdoor concerts and some of the big outdoor experiences. We didn't have alcohol. I had water and we had tons of food and stuff to eat, you know. Uh, but it had a whole different energy and it was a great energy. I had friends play lots of different music here and stuff and it was just a really, really good time. And uh, you know, plenty of chairs and everybody's very enthusiastic and having a great time. And after about an hour, everybody's just digging on the music and the food, you know, cause they're laid back. Now we cannot have those events um, without a thousand dollar minimum permit and lots and lots of guidelines. You can't give samples away anymore. I can't get samples from my vendors and give them to you. I could sell them to you for not much, but that's the only way we can pass it on. But when we had samples, they were so generous. Everybody was so generous. It was a great time, yeah. You know, in the very beginning, all of us come, oh, what is this, you know? But we immediately clamped down. Um, and that's how we were able to stay open here. Uh, we're unique in that we have a controlled waiting room and a little gift shop, which, you know, is not nothing cannabis oriented, but we have a controlled waiting room. You come in one door, come in this door and exit the back through the garden. So people were able to have zero contact except with one of us behind there. We always wore masks. Now it's an ordinance in the state of California, everybody wears masks. And we have a couple paper masks available and we have hand cleaners and we clean the handles and the doors throughout the day. And we've always kept things tidy, but we can isolate things which, and we'll do curbside, but only a few people have asked for that. You know, uh, mainly they know they can come in here safely and have no contact except with the person at the desk. Working in a dispensary is like most retail jobs, except it isn't. Dispensaries in Colorado have strict rules and regulations to follow. Breaking the rules means the state can shut down a dispensary. As a bud tender, customers joke with me that the staff and I are probably stoned all day long. What they do not see is the passion and incredible work ethic that I display as an employee in a dispensary. Me and other staff members do our best to guide customers through each section, usually from our flower selection to our edibles and then our vape pens, making education a priority. Most of the customers that I help want exactly the same thing, high THC percentage with a lower price point. Usually, this means that they want an ounce of our cheapest flour, around $85, testing at 30% THC or more. A few months ago, an older gentleman with bumps covering his arms and face walked into my shop. How can I help you? I asked. He told me that he was looking for RSO oil, also known as Rick Simpson oil. This is a concentrated form of cannabis known to have medicinal benefits, specifically for cancer. I learned that the customer usually makes his own RSO oil, but for some reason or another, he needed some that was already made. We have oil with just THC, a one-to-one -one ratio with CBD, or just CBD, I said. In the process, we talked about how he was using RSO oil. He described his skin cancer and how he treated it by applying the oil topically. I took another glance at his arms and noticed scars blended in with the bumps. 
He pointed them out to me and said that the scars were a result of him applying the RSO oil on the bumps. My eyes almost popped out of their sockets. Was I seeing this correctly? Did he really treat his own skin cancer with Rick Simpson oil? And did the cannabis medicine actually work? I was mesmerized by the proof standing right there in front of me. This plant had really used its healing power to treat this stranger's cancer. My immediate thought was that cannabis is a miracle plant. I then remembered it was not. It was simply the miracle of science. The benefits of cannabis include pain relief, seizure reduction, anxiety relief, the easing of PTSD symptoms, slowing the development of Alzheimer's, autism treatment, treatment of symptoms of cancer, and the list goes on and on and on. Cannabis has the potential to treat and possibly even cure cancer. According to cancer.org, there have been some early clinical trials of cannabinoids in treating cancer in humans and more studies are planned. Also, cannabis allows the everyday person to simply function better throughout the day. Most days are the same working in a dispensary, until they aren't. When I serve patients, I am reminded that Mother Nature has gifted us with cannabis, the almighty healer that creates social connections along the way. Initially, dispensaries were, thank, thank goodness, that were an essential service, not only to carry my, uh, my income, my employee's income, but it's an essential medicine. Now, I know people with high anxieties, they don't survive without this, or migraine headaches and pain, and, you know, the euphoria end, the recreational end, I'm sure that somebody could argue about that, but it's much better than drinking. Nobody died from cannabis, you know, so a lot of people have been coming back to cannabis you know, through this, and I think they've increased, I mean, they have increased their usage, particularly in edibles. We have a lot more edibles now because people are comfortable maybe having a little snack of edibles, certainly if they're home all day, to reduce anxiety or just to relax. It's better than sitting home drinking all day, you know, you're better off, you know, having some reefer, whichever, you know. So uh, that's increased. Initially, people were kind of hoarding, I mean, buying up I think they were afraid because it was happening in stores, but that never happened. None of our vendors faulted us ever. So we've always had a good constant supply here and uh, people are enjoying that. Yeah. Okay, to ensure they're safe, once again, it was a one-way traffic. Everyone wore masks. We've worn masks forever and uh, one of our vendors was great. They switched right away and started making hand sanitizer, care by design. And so they sent us a couple cases of hand sanitizer. We have it for us. We use it between everything, uh, cleaning the counters, cleaning our hands. I personally, initially everybody wore gloves in here, but it was just harder to deal with the money and everything. So now we clean our hands after any contact other than ourselves. You know, we take people's money. And uh, one thing about here, all this product's only been touched here once when we put it away. Nobody's taking things off your shelves and looking at them. There's no self-service. So everything is delivered by us and we've been able to isolate, isolate things like that. As there was talk about things getting contaminated in grocery stores and whatnot. So people come in the front door and they're protected. We're protected because they have a mask and they stand back a little bit till you know, the transaction is completed and they go out the back door. We stock some rolling papers, but we don't sell rolling papers anymore. It is rare. This lower case used to be full of every kind of, you know, lots of different kinds of rolling papers and, and cones and everything. People went to pre-rolls or they're using pipes. Our glassware is just cleared out of here. We finally got a new order coming, but uh, pre-rolls, yeah, way, way went out ahead of everything else. And we've been able to get some pre-rolls at a good price. Uh, we have a couple of them under $10, which, you know, they had been like out the door $15 for joint with, ta with all the taxes, 41% tax total. Um, but now we get those a little bit lower and they just fly out. We have a Sativa Panacea uh, that's $7.95. And we have a local discount, also senior vet discount. So uh, people can get out of that, get out the door for $8.50 and it's beautiful. Yeah. So a lot of that, but flour has always remained our number one seller. We have lots of edibles and, and uh, vapor cartridges, but. Uh, and vape cartridges did slow down a little bit. You know, that's where it's a battery that heats, it's a battery that heats the uh, concentrated oil, 
This is one for instance, this is a dart, this is a battery, and there's oil in here and it, it, it's heated right here in a little pod, and then you inhale it. This kind of slowed down initially, you know, over the lung things with COVID. So people are now coming back, they say it's okay, and they're controlling it. You, This is your pen, unless you give it to somebody else, you're not gonna have contaminants, you know. So that was, uh, that's been a real change too, yeah. Well, I do, we venture out there a bit, you know, but only with vendors that will give us samples. You know, I'm not gonna just buy something if I don't sample it. For instance, there's a, a, it's not a giant cellar, but it's very cool, it's an inhaler. You know, just like a bronchial, it's a bronchial inhaler, and uh, it's a really good deal. You know, when they first came out, they were like 100 bucks, now they're like $35. Uh, that's one of the newer things, and it hasn't quite caught on, you know, but uh, I think it will. Um, Certainly people coming to also uh, using tinctures for recreational and euphoria. That's something that has grown. Instead of buying a candy bar or you know, cannabis or a concentrate or a cartridge, people are, are getting uh, THC oils, concentrated oils, and dosing with those to relax with. And also for sleep and pain, but that's kind of a movement that people have been shifting toward. My charisma's good. You know, I'm my uh, uh, another name most people know me by is Bone Daddy. You know, is uh, I ran a roadhouse for 12 years, so I've been here a very long time, and I know people. I've been in the trades forever. You know, I'm very enthusiastic. Uh, you know, we try to get products for everybody and all you know dollar values. Uh, here we can't have things that are real, real expensive out of line, perhaps just because it's the nature of the area, except for visitors. Uh, I'd say it's my charisma and we welcome everybody. We're real friendly. That's why this place is full of chairs. More people used to hang out before this COVID, you know, just sit around and hang out. A bunch of old stoners, you know. But, uh, and my employees, Jacob and Liz, you know, Liz is new. Jacob's very enthusiastic, been in the trades a long time and nothing is necessarily going to jump off the shelf. I want to share something with you. And have you tried this inhaler? We have a new edible. You got to try this edible. You know, uh, enthusiasm, I think, and being friendly. This is my friend David Allen, and they are printed on aluminum. They're a bit of uh, similar when they're printed to a, uh, a silk screening process. But he took all these photographs, and some non most of them are non altered. Like the one behind me here with the sharp edges, he went in there, blew that up, and cleaned all the edges off. Things are perfect with nature, but sometimes not for the visual. So he cleaned, he cleaned the blades up a little bit on a few of these. Otherwise, these are just the exact photos with he, he lighted, he, you know, uh, he grew some of these, I believe, and uh, the lighting, everything is unto himself. And it really pops on this aluminum. And the room is, the whole building's full of them. That's a hard question because you know, there's stumbling blocks and people watching California, there's been a lot of stumbling blocks, but I have to, you know, side with the state also because they, they've stepped into something. They, they don't know, didn't know what a, a concentrate was or a extraction. They didn't know these terms or how they were done. You know, they've learned a lot, but, uh, and California has advanced more than most any state, I would say. Uh, and it's been easier to deal with the state of California. He like said in the beginning, there are all these bumps and grinds. The counties are issues. The biggest stumbling blocks are in the counties because you cannot apply to the state until you have county approval and uh, zoning and everything else, right? So. The biggest stumbling block is getting through your county. And then, you know, the state is just filling out documents and following their procedures. Uh, in the future, yeah, all the states are going to have to fall, you know, one by one. Only if they even recognize the medical, right, you know, uh, for people of all ages. I do know people, not here, but, you know, they uh, have children on them, you know, particularly they have violent, violent seizures, you know, and they can live close to seizure free with two gel caps a day. Right? Otherwise, they take these heavy, heavy hypnotics and things to uh, keep them from having seizures and it makes them not well. So I think the medical end is really going to anchor all this. Uh, the biggest fighters of this has always been the alcohol and the tobacco industries, right? Because they can't mix. You see cannabis wines and stuff, but they cannot mix. You cannot do both and sell them. So uh, the biggest lobby, the biggest lobby has been alcohol and independent prison and independent food vendors, right? 
So that's the things at state levels, you know. But once you get through your county, it's pretty sailing, pretty easy sailing, you know. So I think all the states have to fall. Initially, I could buy from my friends. I knew lots of farmers and friends of friends of farmers, you know. So you could come in here and look in a jar and pick the buds out you wanted. We are the first dispensary that I know of that we, we took nothing that was not tested. And we were working with the lab to test all the cannabis that came here. We're working to sell anything that's not tested, particularly it had mold or in it. Most all growers are, you know, pretty organic, though not necessarily certified that. Um, so we protected our patients from day one in testing. Um, and in doing that, we've always had a safe product for everyone. And I think that's gonna have to be the state's main concern that you have safe product for everybody. And uh, those little people went by the wayside. It's way too complex. I only know three people that got their state license and it has been a huge hassle, a huge hassle. You know, because now there's a network set up, just like if you were growing, uh, you know, roses, right? To go to a distributor and that has to go to another distributor. This all has to get transported uh, securely. Right, so it set up this entire system that the cost of the product still is low, but taxes, you know, if you're paying 40 cents on the dollar, 41 cents on the dollar, that's a lot. You know, the, the, the cannabis price is the lowest it's ever been around here, you know. And in the black market, um, you know, uh, it just depends on supply and demand. Here we, you know, they source it various different ways to grow it, you know, so our supply's always been good, but um, unto that, uh, we lost some good people, you know, just didn't pay to do it anymore. Even on the black market, you know, we had some great, uh, in the beginning, there were some great edibles too that were tested, but they didn't have the mega millions to go state level in all this testing and preparations and licensing. You can put a couple million dollars into it if you're gonna be manufacturing before you sell a penny's worth, you know. Well, now it's required by the state, right? And we had growers that, uh, in the beginning, we split the cost of tests with them. You know, we bring your product in, you know, uh, and if it didn't test out, we're not gonna, we didn't keep the product, you know. So we saw that from day one. Now it is required, right? Nothing leaves the manufacturer that hasn't been approved on a state level, you know, of its origin. Uh, it's tested for a couple hundred different pesticides. And the biggest thing really for me, always from the beginning, was been mold and contaminants not going into people's lungs, you know, and all that is insured now by everything as inspection uh, oriented. The edibles, everything that goes into it, the tinctures, it's medical grade extractions. So now it's already there. Most people already know about that. In the beginning, we taught people what testing was. You know, we have testing here. You know, the other places don't. They're just buying it from maybe the same people, but they're not testing the product. And we had product fail that we didn't buy. Those that haven't tried it, you know, through the years, and we're talking about generally older people. The kids are pretty open to this, though they can't come here. You have to be uh, 21 or 18, you have to have a medical ID. But you know, just, just to try it. I mean, try it on low levels for relaxation. If you're drinking, you know, we've had a lot of people stop drinking by a, a drink that we offer. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's hop-like and it's bubbly. There's no alcohol in it. So you still get a little hop taste, you know. Uh, substitute for alcohol and for pain in the medical end I'm telling you I'm a witness and I've seen people that couldn't even use their hands and now they're able to buy their regimen of CBD whether it be orally and topically so you know uh, just give it a try and uh, you know leave people be that are using it it's not gonna hurt them. it's really not gonna hurt them in the hands uh, of, of a close to same person anyway you know what I'm saying uh, we don't want to drive on it you know but uh, unto that, uh, try instead of alcohol and try to relax at night and to sleep. Lots of people come here just for sleep. They have no sleep and uh, now they're able to sleep using THC. So.